is going on guys, it's No One Side Triple X here. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my game Pob. Uh, I'm not going to be going into in-depth in this. Uh, this is actually my first mobile game I've released on the Android market. I made it in just over a week and I'll just give you a quick almost synopsis if you like of what the game actually does, how you play it. Um, so yeah, let's just get straight into it. Uh, this here is where my mouse is right now. If you can't see the mouse, I don't know if I have it clicked on. Um, this is where the game main window is. Uh, at the bottom you have a small character called Pob. It's neither male or female. It's, it's more of a, like asexual, you know. I just want like a, a character that anybody could play, male or female, and not have any biased opinions towards it. Uh, and it's very easy to draw in sprites because I'm no uh, 2D artist. And the background's uh, like a city. Uh, it was originally just black, but I changed it to have a bit more shadow and stuff thanks to some Reddit users who said, you need to add shadows, you got to um, show that it's not 2D exactly. Because if you look at games like Minecraft and Mario and stuff, it's a 2D sprites. Um, obviously, all the controllers and stuff are, but the actual background itself doesn't necessarily look flat as a piece of paper. Um, this is now an Android market. I'm just going to say at the start, almost like I'm advertising it a little bit. Um, you get there's a light version that has an advertisement that appears after you, you die every time, but there's also a full version for 50p, which is the cheapest. Um, you can actually set it. I would have liked it to be like 20 or something, but um, that's not too much at all, really. Uh, the game is pretty damn addictive. Basically, what you have to do is small things will fall from the sky, pieces of color, as you can see, and when it hits pop, it's game over and your best time's recorded. Uh, there's bonuses in the game. Uh, if a small piece of black, let me just show you here. Um, no, I can't actually set that here. But what I'll do is I'll drag my bonus into the scene. This the black one has um, particle effects on it, so it just makes it a bit more uh, obvious that it's a, it's a bonus. It's also in the tutorial, but I'll get to that soon. Um, so when I click play, you look at the timer. It hits him. It goes up by five. Um, that's not going to work just now because it's, it's in the scene, so uh, I was blocking it, all the paint around the edges. So let's just undo that because this is actually live. This version is actually going to be what I'm using, so I don't I haven't actually made a backup since I finished uh, programming this morning. Uh, basically, what we got we side sc scrolls left, side scroll controls left, side sc scroll controls right. Uh, if the player clicks the left hand side, the sprite will move right. If the player clicks the right hand side, the sprite will move left. When I say click, I mean touch. Um, we've also got a pause at the top, so you can pause or start. It's in an awkward position for a reason, because I don't really want you using it, and so you could probably find a few bugs in the game. Actually, no, you can't. The, the, the game code is very simple. Uh, so I'm just going to go s basically explain to you what I've done. Uh, here's my project, and this is everything that's going to be used in the game, other than a few assets. Um, that aren't in the hierarchy, uh, such as I got some scripts here. A lot of these are ones I use. Best time records the player's best time. Uh, control is that's actually a script that um, I could control both, but I wanted them individually because I want to try some different stuff. I want I, I originally had the game with small arrows at the size that you clicked, and it would f it would lose opacity a little bit, but I find it much more better just being able to use one hand clicking left to right either side of the screen. Also, when the player the player moves opposite direction to where you click was a complete accident. Um, like I said, I was originally using this. I don't think I said that, but I was originally using this, and I used these two, and then I actually got them mixed up. So left actually controls right, and right's left. But I just left that in the script, so I I know myself that that's what it's doing. Uh, but this that basically just um, it made it a lot more fun, a bit more addicted, and. It's, a, it's a different to every other game I've seen, really. Uh, I actually was on Instagram the other day and I sadly seen a game like this where the player just dodges things falling from the sky, but I think this is pretty unique. Uh, I haven't, other than that guy on Instagram, which was a complete fluke. Um, uh, this this is better than his one, anyway. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the scripts, but uh, I did make a tutorial for it. That's an extremely ugly piece of code, but uh, a lot of the code I actually wrote between the hours of... 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. So uh, I was kind of getting annoyed with the game because I would be t testing new stuff out because this is new Unity 4.3 and I'm used to Unity 3.4. Uh, we've got trigger power-ups here, which is very simple. If the 
if this particular, because there's a script attached to each of these, which are all the enemies, uh, other than this one here, which is the power up. Now, if the player touches the power up, if the sorry, if the power up collides with the player, which is each have their own colliders around them, um, then the uh, the um, player will get an extra five seconds added to the timer. Um, it will play a sound, and I put in a debug log just while I was testing it out that to let me know that it's doing something. Um, my computer is making a bit of revving up now. I think it's actually dying on me. Uh, let's hope it doesn't. Oh, I've also added in, before I released it on the market, the day I was releasing it on the market yesterday, I actually thought about adding in a ticking sound effect for the timer. Audio assets is very hard to implement in this game because I didn't want any copyright. I wanted to make it all myself, so the game was completely from scratch. Everything was made, us our assets, everything was made by me, basically. That's what I wanted. And um, I had to use some old old clips from Nintendo, um, old Nintendo devices that you could take from old Nintendo devices, sorry. Um, uh, here we have another scene, that's what we'll load up. The tutorial is essentially a bunch of uh, images I put together just to explain to the people who are a bit confused with a little bit of a backstory behind it. The player touch touches the screen, it changes to another one, and then uh, a sound plays as well, so it's a little bit of a nice effect there, not too much going on there. The menu was a bit interesting to make because originally I actually had it all looking a lot different. Um, I'll try to load a picture up in the background while I talk about this. But I wanted everything to s like blend in nicely, so switching from one scene to another, I wanted it to look good uh, without having without having like a massive change. Uh, between scenes. So when you actually play the game, you realize when you click start, the character doesn't move at all, and it just every all the all of these graphics just disappear, and you're immediately in the game. And the same when you die, you just get thrown straight back to the menu screen when you can see your best time. Because I didn't feel the need to add in like extra scenes when you didn't need to, because all you want to do is just get in the game, play, start, off you go. Um, there is an advertisements. There are advertisements. Sorry, that will pop up after you die each time. Uh, you have to just close it and click start or check out the advertisement or you can buy the full version uh, so if you know how advertisements are you got you got, got to find a way because it's not it's not it's not free to make a game uh, as you can see here it's a bit tinted but that's not usual uh, it wasn't usually tinted uh, I think if I take any screenshot on this computer it makes it a bit tinted but as you can see this is what it was originally looking like um, the way I came up with ideas for the game was actually in college one day uh, I'm not going to go into the backstory behind it because it's actually extremely wrong, but I would work on, I would take screenshots of, as soon as I had a really basic game, you can see the arrows here, as soon as I had a basic idea what the game was doing with the timer and the character moving, I would um, I would go on my phone and I would take screenshots and I'd be like, oh I can do this, so you can actually see the stages of the game gradually progressing, I mean this is one stage, you can see that the difference between the art on that one and that one's quite drastic really this one looks flat uh, you got a bit of blur in the background shows some distance no trees because that's using a, a wrong type of pixelation you could say that the background's not using it comes immediately obvious added a road in you know you got these cubes that were originally falling uh, that, that as soon as I got these cubes going I was like yes I have a game because as soon as the, the player moves this and right hits it back to main menu that's it and from this stage it was basically tweaking it and making the user interface look a lot nicer um, yeah, originally I did want to have like a little AI, like little people wandering around in the background, but uh, I kind of just wanted to get the game out in like a week or so, so you can always make a game better, but get it working and then make it better, I say, so. Uh, yeah, that's that, That's pretty much all of the scenes. I have a bonus credit page, um, a little bit of fun as a, you should download the game and give you an incentive. There's an animation that goes across that just has some funny quotes and cool things that you might want to read up on. Uh, Prefabs, I use these a lot, so whenever I would create something, I would probably use another scene. I would drag it into the prefab folder and I could use these in other scenes. Uh, so here we have the background. The background stays in the same position as I flick between the scenes. You can see the background doesn't move at all, so I made the background a prefab. Uh, the best time, it doesn't actually need to be a prefab. Um, the enemies I originally was because uh, on the menu I wanted like paint. Not paint, sorry, colour. I cannot say paint because I don't want people to think it's paint, it's colour. <laughs> uh, it's a colour storm, say. And uh, he's living in a simple black and white world, so he doesn't need colour. Uh, and yeah, I got car animations. It's not just a car, randomly will come across. 
uh, using the new animator, which is a uh, it was really good good to use actually. It, was, uh, it took me a minute, a little while, a couple of a uh, uh, documentation to read up on, but when, once you get it working, it's really great. So we'll play here while I'm in the game. Um, I'll tell you what, we'll disable the enemies and then we'll click play. If Unity doesn't crash, because Unity has been crashing recently and it's been it's been um, annoying me a lot and I think it's crashed. So we're just going to restart. Uh, it'll take seconds. And then I'll move on to the uh, the audio assets of the game. Yeah, Unity crash, and I had to constantly save scenes uh, because this would happen. I'm not really... I don't usually throw stuff like this on the channel, uh, but if you're still listening, then awesome. You've obviously got an interest in this, and some tutorials will be made. Um, comment on the one of my videos for Unity. Uh, said that, can we have an update? And I was like, absolutely, because I was actually wanting to make an update, because the new, new Unity engine is so good. Uh, is fantastic. If you want to make an animation, you literally, as simple as, you know what, I'll even make one now. Uh, it's also, in the project window, it's fantastic to have everything labelled and, you know, if you just need something, you go in there. Graphics and art gets a bit confusing, uh, but art should really be under sprites. It should really be called sprites instead of art. But, see here we have idle 1 and idle 2. If I just drag that into the hierarchy, uh, we'll call it Actually, you know what? I don't want to make any more scenes. What we'll do is we'll just load up a new scene. Let's see, so we just get our characters under R, idle one, idle two, drag it into the scene, create a new animation in assets. We'll just leave it there so I can delete it, and then that's it done. That is that's the animation created for this. So we're running at twelve frames a second. So you can see that's the that's a idle animation. Um, He's, he is moving a lot faster, like 12 frames a second. <laughs> it means he's jumping up and down like a crackhead. Uh, but it's really easy to edit and stuff. You know, well, it's 126. He's off his nut there. Uh, but like six frames a second is basically what I'm running a lot of the little well, animations at. And you can see in the project window there, he's dancing about like I'm a madman. So there's that. Um, I think that's pretty much it. All I want to really show you, other than that, saying there's a few tutorials out, I just wanted to show you a bit of the background. So. Uh, download the game, buy the game if you like it. Uh, it's very addictive. Uh, my high score, I think, is 130, so 135. So if you can beat that, then you're you're much better than me at the game. Uh, yeah, a lot of the sounds are NES. That's it. That's it. NES. Uh, very, very simple. Just single snippets of sounds. And the script, it was programmed in C sharp and JavaScript. A lot of the JavaScript was because. Um, I had a lot of, from previous projects, I had a lot of code and I was like, oh, I can do this. So basically the spawner is the long, this is the longest piece of code throughout the game. Uh, left movement, right movement is very easy. Uh, the spawner took me a while and I actually wasn't sure how to do an infinite loop. So I learned that. That was probably one of the main things I learned in the project, how to do an infinite loop. Otherwise, I was just um, uh, instant, 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 instant. Instantiate, inst instantiate. Sorry, um, it's somewhere in here th that word. But um, this is the longest piece of code. Uh, it's very basic. That's just basically going to spawn a bunch of objects at the top. Obviously now it's open source because I've shown you, so I don't really care. Code didn't take long. I mean, you could program it much quicker than me. Cause, uh, but like I said, this was done in a week. A little project to do. Uh, I had an idea to make one one day, so I did it. Uh, there we go. That's the that's, that's the game back to normal. That's the game up on the uni on the the Android store. Be sure to subscribe and for whenever this is a game, I'll probably make a video like this just to show you a bit of the background. Uh, so yeah, you can see. Actually, I'll quickly do this before I go. You can see if I go into 3D here and I click play, you can see everything that goes on uh, from 3D. So. We got a car there, and it's going to start move. And the car was actually a problem, so I ha I wrote a script for this, but now I realised that it would take up about 500 kilobytes a bit more. Whoa, he's off. Uh, yeah, uh, the the script takes up a bit more memory, but you can see he just flips around, and then he comes back, and he's following the same line, and then he goes off, and he'll rotate around again. Um, and then he's going to take slower to rotate around again because what happens is. Uh, the van will come across, and that's a marker point at 60 seconds. So if you've made it to 60 seconds, you'll know because there's a van in the background. Um, actually, that's the third animation. This is the third one that comes across, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We've got a couple of listeners in the scene. We've got audio sources, sorry, and we've got listeners on the camera. 
Uh, that's pretty much all I really want to go through, but if you have any questions, be sure to comment, and uh, I'll be happy to help you out. There's the van coming across, so thanks a lot for watching the video. Be sure to check out Paul on the Google Play Store, soon to be iOS. Thanks a lot for watching. Thank <laughs> you.